This video shows how to set up the Holiday Coro six row concentric star in X lights. First, let's start with a little bit of information on our star. First, what we have is six concentric rows. So one, two, three, four, five, six, going from the inside out. Each of those concentric rows is comprised of first on the inside 20, then 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Now, we have within limits of controllers and power, how many pixels we can run. So we can't do all 270 unless we use some unique power injection. Now, if you're using that method to run 270 at a reduced output or something unique, this video may not apply to you. Our assumption here is that we're using three direct outputs with 100% output to the lights, uh, all within spec of the lights and the controller. So, uh, what we've done here then is we have to fit that within those limits. And our limit here is 125 pixels, but we can see that we have up to 110 in a single output. So what we're going to be considering here is that we have a controller. It has four distinct outputs coming out of it, and they are driving rows one through three with 90 pixels. The second output is rows four and five with 110 pixels, and then row six, output three with 70 pixels. Okay, now also this is, as it says here, shown from back, there's going to be a little bit of understanding that needs to be made on the flipping back and forth in X lights because X lights shows some things from the front, some things from the back. So we're showing this from the back where you're going to install your pixel nodes. Also keep in mind that everything that's shown here is marked on the back of the star. One thing to keep in mind here is these red circles. These indicate where you're starting your strings and then the arrows indicate the direction we're installing our pixels. Okay, great. Let's get started here. So we're going to flip over into X lights. The first thing we need to do is set up our outputs. Now, this video is generic in nature and may not necessarily apply to your specific setup as it relates to IP address, universes, or channels. So we're going to use some generic numbers. I'm going to put in 192.168.0.60. Um, Again, just assuming that this is the way we've set ours up. I'm going to say starting universe 20, and I'm going to say number of universes 1. Now, a universe is comprised of 512 DMX channels or up to 170 pixels. We don't have 170 pixels, so we're always under one universe. So we do need to go ahead and enter the last channel. Now, this is not technically required, but I recommend it just to make sure you keep everything uh, accurate. So if we look here, what we'll see is, is that we have um, 90 pixels. So if we take 90 pixels here, as you can see, 90 times 3 is going to be 270, pix or 270 DMX channels. And so we're going to set up 270 DMX channels. Now just for good measure, I'm going to put in here 20, 30, 40, which is the rows of pixels. 20 pixels, 30 pixels, 40 pixels. Click OK. Now I'm going to do the same thing again, this time for the second output. 0 0.60, same controller. Starting universe is going to be 21 this time. And we're going to do one universe. And we need to figure out how many pixels we have here. So let's go back to our drawing. And our drawing shows that that is 110 pixels. For, for rows 40, I'm sorry, 50 and 60, uh, pixels. So again, we come back, oops, we come back here. We go uh, 110 times 3, 330 DMX channels. So let's flip back over here, 330. And we're going to put in here 50, 60. And finally, our outermost concentric row is going to have 70, oops, and 2, 160, 0.60. And we're going to start our universe here, the next one in line, 22. And again, back over to our calculator, we have 70 times 3, 210. And we're just going to put 70 in there since that's what we have. Okay, just let's review our data here. If this isn't right, this could cause problems. And what you may wish to also do is use the test function under here, test, to test your strings. So you can go in here turn on this entire section right here, and then you can go in and go up and down. This just gives you some sanity to make sure that what you've configured hardware-wise 
is actually turning on the right pixels. So at this moment, if we had this checked off, we should see rows 1, 20, 30, and 40 lit up, 50, 60, and then finally 70. If that doesn't happen, stop, figure out why that isn't correct. Now, also not shown in this video is the configuration of the controller to match these settings for universe 20, 21, 22. So again, we are leaving some information out here you will need to do specific to your installation. Okay, so now we have our outputs. Let's just assume that we've tested them. All the lights work, everything is great. So now let's come to our layout. So we're gonna go over here to star. Now I should mention here that we will not be showing you an entire display. Usually the star is in the context of an overall display with trees and house and maybe an outline or a matrix or other objects. We're not showing those here, we're just showing this star. So you can add this star to an existing display. So I'm gonna click here, say create a new star, click once with my left mouse button, come over here, left click, and it's just got a dot. That's not what we need because it's not well defined right now. So we have 50, I mean, uh, number strings. This is one string. So let's go back to our, our, our uh, design. We can see that it's 90 pixels or as, Xlights calls them nodes. So they're, of course, nodes, the physical layout. So we put 90 in here. The star does have five points. And this is bottom center clockwise. So let's go back here. Here's the bottom. So this is the top up here. This is the bottom center. As you can see, it is in the center. And what we also know here is this is showing from the back. But Xlights assumes for model setup, you're looking at the front where the lights are visible. So this is installing the pixels in a counterclockwise position from the back, but when viewed from the front, they'll be going in a clockwise position. So hence, clockwise or CW. All right, now this is not required, but I'm going to go ahead and do this just to be absolutely accurate. So I always know exactly what I've got set up. So I'm gonna set up universe uh, 20 on this IP address of this controller. Remember we have three of them set up. I'm just gonna very clearly define that this is the universe and the IP address of the controller that I'm using here. Okay, now uh, we also need to come down here and I'm just I'm gonna go over here to size location. I'm gonna expand this. I'm gonna put 600 and I'm gonna put 400 just to make these numbers easy. And I'm gonna put a scale in here of 10. Now this all depend on your particular display. So I got a scale of 10 on X and Y. Um, tell you what, let's, I'm gonna scroll out here. Um, and here, let's try this. Let's just put five and five. Okay, now you'll notice it's just one row. Uh, so that's not right. So what we need to do is come back up here and we need to tell it the layer sizes. We need to tell it how to divvy up those 90 nodes or pixels. So I'm gonna put in 20, comma 30, comma 40. So it knows it starts with 20, then 30, then 40. I'm gonna hit save. And now we'll look what we've got. We've got three rows and let's just right click on this and say wiring view i'm going to expand this and so if we look at the wiring view we see pixel one or node one one two three and if we compare this back with what we have on our star there it is one two three four and so on so we're looking good here we can see that node 90 ends here and we can see node 90 ends right here and that starts the next string. So everything's looking good here. So let's go ahead, close that. Uh, by the way, that wiring diagram is shown from the reverse side. Okay, so the next thing I need to do, I need another star. I need a star within a star. So I'm gonna go back up here, go to the star, which is already selected. I'm just gonna click down here. And I'm going to now see it's got star. Now it's got star two. So this is one string still. And so let's look back at our design. Our design is on output two for 110 pixels. So uh, we're going to put in here 110. We still have five points. We still have center clockwise. Uh, but this time we have, remember we view 20, 30, 40. Now we use 50, 60, right? And we're gonna come over here and we're going to just define again very explicitly. This is universe 21. And uh, just to get my numbers here, here I got 600 and 400. To get them in the exact same hunt spot so that they're centered over the exact same location, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and select that. So we got five and five is the scale. Five, five. 
And look, now we have our outside line. I'm just going to right click on that and say wiring view. And that's looking good. So again, one all the way around to 110. So that's two rows, uh, 50 and 60. Great. Everything's looking wonderful. All right. So now you can imagine we're just going to do the same thing. So I'm going to go up here, click on that, and I'm going to go 600. Or actually here, let's just start up here again. Strings. We have 110. We have, we have, oh, whoops. I have made a mistake. I'm going to undo that. Undo that. Uh, whoops, it looks like I did click in here. So I'm going to just click in there. Ah, there we go. Now we've added our third star. And so we're going to say one string, 110 nodes, bottom. This is 70. And we're going to be explicit with our start channels. Oops. And we're going to say universe 22. And we got 110. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's it's 70. So let's just go back, look here. So we have 70 outputs on the last output. So not 110, 70. So let's make sure I didn't change that. So I get 110, 70. Yeah, all looking good. 22. Okay, so we're going to do 600 and 400 and 10 and 10. And I think we might have put, oh, I'm sorry. I put in five as my scale. So I'm going to go back to five. All right. So now look, we've got our star. It's looking good. I'm going to right click over there. I'm going to say wiring view. Here's our wiring view. You can see one through 70. Everything looks good. It's going in the right direction. Uh, also keep in mind, as it says here, review, reverse view, caution reverse view, because we're running it, we're wiring it from the back. So we're looking at the front right now, but wiring it is backwards. Okay, so now we have all of these stars together. Now what we could do is we, we want to treat this as one thing, since it is one thing. So I'm going to right click in this model section. I'm going to say add group. And I'm going to say six row star, for example. And we're going to simply just add all of these in there. And now this, whoops, this is just one single element. So in other words, when we go to sequence that, we'll be able to create an element. So let me just go ahead and say new sequence animation, quick start. Now, you can see here, I can sequence against the entire star. So I'm just going to drag this down here. See, there's my star. You can see it's acting. I've put the effect on one thing, but you can also put effects in submodels or sub parts of this. So for example, here, um, I can put that in there and just those. And then I could have uh, fire going on my other section here, or I could do them together. Uh, so we can then put things either on subsections. So you can see here, we could even get down to where we could create individual um, rows so that we can sequence each individual row in here. So again, this is highly customizable and this just assumes the generic setup and your setup may be different. Or you may choose to sequence in a different way. So that completes our setup instruction.